Hi everyone and welcome to the Python Selenium series where we will learn how to create user interface automation for our websites. So Selenium is widely used and it is very popular for a great reason because it can help you to create tests for your web applications and it can also help you to create online bots which is very nice. So in this series we are going to learn how to use Selenium from the basics and later on we are going to continue developing two great projects where in the first one we will learn how to create an online bot that will report the cheapest deals from a booking website and in the second project we are going to use Selenium with the unit test library together to help us test our web application. So say that you have a website that developed with Django or Flask Using Unitest together with Selenium could be extremely helpful to test different areas on your web application. And this series is really going to include some great episodes, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and as well as click the bell notification so you will never miss an episode from this entire series. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get started! Great, so before we really get started, we need to understand that there are going to be some prerequisites. So in this series, I'm going to assume that you have Python installed and as well as you got an IDE like PyCharm that is configured properly with Python. Now you can also use a random text editor like Sublime Text, but just make sure that it is connected properly to your system interpreter. And if you don't have any of those, then you can visit my 5 hour beginners course and catch up with the installations. Alright, so like a lot of libraries in the Python programming language, we need to somehow use the library of Selenium. So that's why we need to somehow install it on our computer and we can do that with the pip command. Now if you got Python installed, then you should also have the pip package manager installed together with it. So now I'm going to open our terminal here and I'm going to say pip install selenium like that. Now I'm doing this in the system interpreter because I'm not going to use virtual environments throughout this series. So that's why I could allow myself to do that from the terminal. Okay, so if you see no errors, then it means that everything is great and we can go back to PyCharm and basically import this library and see how we can use it. All right, so here I'm going to import from selenium import web driver. So I'm importing something very specifically inside this Selenium library. And there's a great reason for doing that. Now, when it comes to performing user interface automation in web browsers, then we need to somehow open up that web browser. So that's why we need to import a dedicated library that is going to automate us the action of opening up a web browser. Now, when we talk about performing automations on a web browser, we need to understand that for each web browser out there, there is going to be a version that is going to be dedicated for performing those automated tasks. So for example, if we want to perform those automation tasks on Chrome browser, then we need to instantiate the Chrome driver class to perform those automated actions in it. So that's why we need to import that library. All right, so now that we have imported this, then we have to instantiate the library that is going to be responsible to pop up the Chrome browser to us. So that's why I'm going to go down and I'm going to say, for example, driver is equal to webdriver.chrome like that. And as you can see here, there's actually more options rather than Chrome. So if I delete that and I press on control space, then you can see that we also got Firefox and I believe that there is Edge as expected. So as you can see, you can perform those automated actions in different browsers. But actually throughout this series, I'm going to use Chrome browser. So that's why I will say Chrome and we'll instantiate the class like that. Now we could go ahead and try to execute this but we will receive some errors and the errors are going to talk about something that is called Chrome driver that does not exist on my computer and as well as it is not in the pad. So let's break down this error into two important steps that we need to do. So first of them, we need to download the Chrome driver and actually Chrome driver is a separated executable file that Selenium web driver uses to perform those automated actions in a Chrome browser. So that means that we need to download this Chrome driver.exe file to our computer. So that's why I'm going to 
bring here this website and I will put the link of that in the description for sure. And as you can see, here is the page that we can download the Chrome driver. And if we scroll down, then you can see that there are a lot of versions of Chrome driver that you can download. Now, you might ask yourself how I'm going to decide which version should be installed on my computer. Well, this depends on what Chrome browser version you have right now installed on your computer. So if you use the Chrome browser by default like me, then what we can do is basically go to a separated tab and we can write here Chrome colon two forward slashes and then say version. And right after that, we will see an output like the following. And as you can see from here, here is the Google Chrome version that I use. And as you can see, we have the major version as 89. So for yourself, it could be 90, 91, 92, or even 84. But you need to make sure that this major version is going to be matched to the version that you are going to download from the Chrome driver page. So in my case, I'm going to go back now to that page and I'm going to search up for a version that is starting with 89 and that's why I'm going to click here and right after that I'm going to search for the specific archive that I need and for sure it is going to be Windows because that is the operating system of my machine and I'm going to click here and it should start downloading and right after we have this downloaded then we need to extract it because it is actually a zip archive. Alright, so as you probably know, in Windows by default, the download files are going to be downloaded in the downloads library. And you want to move this to a location that you want to have your Chrome driver. So for myself, it is going to be under the C drive and inside the folder that I named Selenium drivers, as you can see in the left side of my screen. So I'm going to cut this from here and move this to the folder that I'd like to have it. So I'm going to do that and right after that let's go ahead and work with this folder now. So as you can see the location of that would be C Selenium drivers like that and you can again put it in whatever location you like to and right after that I'm going to extract the files in here and as soon as I have done this then you can see that we got the executable file located in this directory so it is a great start to solving our problems that we have when we try to execute this python file perfect so back to pycharm now if we will try to execute this file again then we will end up with the same error and this is because we did not perform the second step that i talked about when we saw this error and we need to now put the location of our chrome driver in an environment variable that is called path now the path environment variable is going to be responsible for the files that your system should look up for when you want to execute them immediately from the terminal so that's why it should be inside the path environment variable now we could have done this in the system level but that is actually a not great idea if one day you would like to perform this selenium project on another server so that's why configuring this environment variable in the code level and not in the system level is considered as a best practice. So that's why I'm going to say up top here something like import OS and I'm going to now put one more value to the already existing path environment variable. So I'm going to say os.nviron like that and then I'm going to look up for the key of path and make sure that you should do it all in capitalize like I did. And now we'd like to use plus equals because we are adding a path value to already existing path. We could have multiple values for this environment variable. And right here, we want to specify the location of our Chrome driver. So I can start typing here C colon and forward slash. So I'm pointing to the C drive of my computer and I'm going to say here selenium drivers like that because this is the folder name where I have the Chrome driver. All right, so right after we have done this, then we should add here the R letter before the double quotes. And this is actually a convention for a prefix that is going to mark it as a row string and it is going to be helpful when you specify paths to different locations. So 
Now, if we were to try to execute this program, then we should see now the Chrome popped up and that is exactly what is happening. So it means that now we are ready to work and start trying to perform some automations on a random website. All right, so now that we understood how to set up a Selenium environment, let's try to perform some automation on a random website. Now, in this episode specifically, I will start by a testing Selenium website, which will allow us to basically take basic actions to get started with it. So I'm going to use this seleniumeasy.com website, and I'm going to go to this URL in here, which I will put the link of that in the description. And I'm going to try to click on that start download, performing it with the Selenium only. And right after we click on that, then we should somehow identify that the progress has been completed. So actually those kind of actions are good candidates for actions that you wanna perform with Selenium without really being involved in clicking manually on those buttons. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of first, we should understand how we are going to identify the element that we want to click on. And in order to do something like that, we can go to the element that we want and we can click on inspect like the following. Now, actually, when it comes to pages, then each page is going to have its unique HTML architecture and each HTML element is going to be described by its type and as well as with some additional attributes. So let's see what I said in action. So I'm going to say inspect. And as you can see, we have this line in blue background. And as I said, the kind of this element is button because we see that it is right after the tags. So that's why it is called a button HTML element. And as you can see, it has different attributes like class, ID, like that. So what we can do from here is to try to identify the element that has the ID of download button like it says in here. So let's try to do and see how we can identify this specific element and try to click on that. All right, so let's go back to PyCharm. Now, before I do that, let me copy the link of the website because we are going to use it just in a minute. All right, so now if I open PyCharm and go down and here we are ready to write some additional code. Now, before everything, we need to specify Selenium. What is the website that we are going to use in our automation? So it should be done with the get method that the driver is going to have. So I will say driver.get and as you can see, it expects for a URL. So I can straightforward put the link of the URL that we actually look to perform some automatic actions. So as you can see, this is the way that the driver.get should be executed. All right, so now that we have done this, then we should somehow tell the Selenium that we like to click on an element that its ID is download button. So I'm going to say here, driver.find underscore element underscore by ID. And as you can see, we have multiple methods of find element by. So we have class name, CSS selector, and even more like name. And those are methods that we are going to see in the future throughout this series. But let's start with the ID. And I'm going to say here, download button like the following. Now, since this entire statement is going to return us an object that we can actually do some additional actions with it, then I should assign this to a variable. So I can say my element, something like that. And then down below, I can say my element dot click like that. And we should see Selenium driver trying to click on that element. So let's test this out. So I'm going to execute that right now and I'm not going to touch anything. So let's see that in action. All right, so it takes us to here. And as you can see, it immediately just click on that element because we see that progress box that says us now that the download has been completed. But there's actually a bit problem with doing this approach because sometimes in most of the cases, loading an entire website could take some time. So that's why we can go between those two lines and actually try to wait before we try to perform an action on an element. So that's why going between those lines and saying something like driver dot implicitly wait 
and here we should specify the amount of seconds that we'd like to wait to this website to being loaded successfully. So we can say that we'd like to wait, for example, three seconds. So it's considered as a better thing to do because now we are totally safe from our browser being a little bit slow sometimes, or maybe we can have some cases that our server could be very slow. So that's why waiting a little bit here and there could be a better idea. So now if we run our program one more time, then let's see the results. So at first, again, the page is being loaded. And as you can see, it immediately tried to download this file. Now, again, this is just a simulation. This really doesn't download anything to your computer. Okay, so let's identify what happened in here. So first of first, we can understand that it really did not wait three seconds. So what that means, it means that the implicitly wait does something special to our driver object because we did not really wait three seconds, right? So let's try to test this with 30 seconds now. So I'm going to execute this one more time. And as you can see, just in a second, it started to download it once again. So this really does not wait in the amount of time that is specified in this line. So what is going on here and why we saw the actions being taken immediately? Well, we could have used here something like time.sleep and specify the amount of seconds to wait. But this is something that we don't like to do here because sometimes we don't like to wait for the complete duration of time in case the element is going to be found before the duration specified it needs to move on to the next line of code execution and so using here the implicitly wait is actually very very useful because again we don't really need to wait 30 seconds if the element is already there in that web page now to be fair there are more things that i'd like to talk about this implicitly wait because it has some more functionalities that i will talk in the future and if you have any questions about the behavior of this tricky method then let me know this in the comment section down below. Perfect. So I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and you understood everything in this getting started tutorial. And I hope to see you in the second episode as well because things are going to be even more interesting from that episode. And if you liked the video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button and as well as subscribing to my channel. I will see you very soon.